Can Lord, I pray tonight that you will open our eyes and you will teach us out of your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the word which we hear tonight will profit us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you for bringing us into your presence this evening to be blessed of you and to learn at your feet. Father, we pray that you will fill our empty vessels to overflowing tonight in Jesus' name. You prepare our hearts even as we praise you even this evening in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer, as we offer. Far on to thee, the sacrifice of tens given, as we offer on to thee, the sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah, we bring the of praise into the house of the of the Lord into the house of the Lord as we offer the sacrifice O seas of tens given as we offer unto thee Blessings and honor and glory and praise and glory and praise and glory and praise. Blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise. And praise, oh, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise, and praise. Oh, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ. I lift up Jesus, he is King of kings. Lift up Jesus, he is Lord of lords. Lift up Jesus, he is King of kings, King of kings, and Lord of lords. Let us lift him up. Oh, he is King of kings, and he is Lord of lords. Oh, he is King of kings, King of kings. And Lord of Lords, let us lift him up. He is Lord of Lords, lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he went for me, he went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me free. Hallelujah. 
He went for me. He went for me all the way. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he went for me, he went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me free. Hallelujah. Oh, he went for me. He went for me, all the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus is the way, is the truth, and the life, oh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Oh, the truth and the life. Yes. Is the truth and the life. Oh, Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Is the truth and the life. The truth and the life. I'll live for Jesus day after day. I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day, day after day. Day after day, I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day, day after day, day after day. Yes, come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask, to be like Him, all through life journey, from head to glory, all I ask, to be like Him, to be like Him, to be like Jesus. All I ask to be like him, all through life's journey, from head to glory. All I ask to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask. To be like him all through life's journey. All I ask. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day. Oh Lord, keep me growing higher every day, higher every day, higher every day, higher every day. Oh, higher every day, higher every day, higher every day. 
I have every day. I have every day. I have every day. I have every day. I have every day. I have every day. Follow, follow, I we follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I will follow him. Follow, follow, I we follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Oh, anywhere. Everywhere I will follow him, follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow, follow him. Oh, anywhere, everywhere, I will follow him, follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere he leads me. I will follow him. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the close of day. Keep me burning. Oh Lord, I pray. Give me oil. Keep me burning, oh Lord. Give me all I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the close of. Give me oil. Amen. The Lord will keep us burning to the close of day in the name of Jesus. Uh, we want to welcome every one of us to the Bible study today again. And I'm trusting the Lord that we will not go back the same way we came in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to specially welcome all our GCK converts, our invitees and visitors uh, who are coming to the headquarters for the very first time. So, if today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, or you are one of the converts from the GC, uh, please can you signify by raising your hand wherever you are seated. Please raise your hand. Uh, you are in the midst of people who love you and who are happy that you are here. Uh, please raise your hand. Uh, please, if I don't see you, kindly rise to your feet wherever you are seated. If today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, a uh, convert from the GCK, uh, visit us. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. I pray that today is your first time. It will not be your last time in Jesus' name. Uh, our GS, our general superintendent, that's Pastor W.F. Kumi, is very delighted that you are here with us. Uh, we are also very happy that you are fellowshipping with us, and our GS bid me welcome you specially. And I'm trusting God that as God has been using him to be a source of blessing to us, it will also be a source of blessing to you in the name of Jesus. Our ushers are beside you. They will give you a slip of paper. Kindly fill the information required. Please fill in capital letters uh, so that we can, uh, it can be very legible and return to the ushers. And you can please be seated. Thank you and God bless you. Our weekly meetings. Three times we meet every week. Uh, on Monday like this, we meet for our Bible study which is a time of systematic and expository study. And the Bible study is taken by our general superintendent, the person of Pastor W.F. Kumi, and it starts by 5.45.
On Thursday, we meet for our Thursday revival and evangelism training service. It's a time where we are being revived and uh, we are being taught how to go out on evangelism at 5.30. Please let's commence publicity and invite our friends and neighborhoods, our, co our colleagues uh, in our neighborhoods. Let's invite them to join us so that they will experience the supernatural wonder of the Lord in their life. And on Sundays, we meet for our Sunday worship service. Every time we meet on Sunday is a time where we have enriching worship service, and the time is 7.45 a.m. Let's do well to start publicity, invite our friends and our colleagues and our neighbors, and as we do so, the Lord will bless us and them together in the name of Jesus. Please let's rise to our feet as we take our congregational songs. We'll be singing from our gospel and Psalm song, hymn number 52, Count Me. When you count the ones who love the Lord, count me, count me. When you count up those who trust his word, count me, count me. When you count up those who are saved by grace, count me, count me who are found in Christ the hiding place. Count me, count me. When you count up those who do the right, count me, count me. Who are walking in the gospel light, count me, count me. When you count up those who forward press, count me, count me. Who shall gain the crown of righteousness, count me, count me. Count me with the children of the heavenly king. Count me with the servants who would serve his bring. Count me with the ransomed who his praises sing. Count me, count me. <laughs> When you Thank you. 
When you count up those who forward press, count me, count me, who shall gain the crown of righteousness, count me, count me, count me, with the children. Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading, but before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially. You will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. Chapter 5. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them, and keep, and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord, for ye were afraid by reason of the fire, and went not up into the mount saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Neither shalt thou steal. Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife. Neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. 
If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near, and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go, say to them, Get you into your tents again. But as for thee, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Chapter 6 Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggedst not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantedst not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, 
a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We shall remain standing as we give our titan offering. Uh, I read to you in the book of Luke chapter 6 in verse 38. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met, with all it shall be measured to you again. Let's uh, raise our titan offering, all that we have brought to offer unto the Lord as we pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you because of the privilege you have given unto us to give unto you. Whatever it is that we give unto you, you have given unto us. Lord, we pray and ask that you accept our token, our sacrifices this evening in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you use it for the propagation of the gospel and the expansion of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please drop your title.
tenderness and brotherly love, Lord, and all that Jesus We now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. Running out, I've come to 
At am mortal yet been found. Who was trusted in me? With a sweet assurance in my breast, for I know it is His only will, each promise to fulfill. Trust in Him. A sweet assurance in my breast, for I know it is His only will, each promise to fulfill. On the word of God I can be rest, with a sweet assurance in my breast, for I know
I welcome you to this great crusade. Today is the day for your miracle. The heavens will open. Oh, the wonder of His grace, that God sent His only begotten Son, the Son of His love, to save sinners like you and me, fleeing from the glory of His presence. The grace that brings salvation. Grace does not give license to keep on sinning. This is not just a biblical concept, but a living testimony that can be experienced and encountered. The grace of God that breaks you, sets you free, turns your life around. This is grace, a grace able to transform our lives and heal all our brokenness. Shout happiness. happiness. Wonder will come to you. The moment of truth is here. A time for people to experience the performance of the wonders of God's grace at the September edition of the GCK. Ministering, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumi, alongside Gospel Music Minister, Corey Von Matre. Live at the Western Alda County High School, Alda River State, Nigeria. From September 26th to 1st of October 2024. On September 27th, 30th and 1st of October, ministers, church workers, and young professionals will converge to learn and ponder on the depth of the revelation of God's Word with Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumi at the Minister's Conference themed, Anointed to Transform the World. Also, on Saturday 28th of September, the Impact Academy, a day set aside for youths, coppers, and young professionals to be empowered and given the templates on how to make extraordinary impact in the society and the world at large will be happening live at the Western Alda County High School, Alda River State. This gospel is for everyone and the grace of God is also sufficient and made available to all. God is going to deliver and deposit something great, wonderful in your life in Jesus' name. Those of us who go to follow up, that means all the children of God, all the Christians, you're visiting them, you encourage them to endure, and you remind them the words of Jesus Christ, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And then after, they'll be baptized in water. You ask yourself, what does this new convert need? What does this new convert need to bring him up, lift him up, and help him to stand on his two feet on this new faith? You are teaching them. You are instructing them. You are telling them, here is the way a child of God behaves. Here is the way a child of God will live. Here is how we maintain a relationship with the Lord and to help them to really stand on their feet. Evangelists must do this. Pastors must do this. Workers, leaders must do this. Christian people must do this as well. What's the result of such a thing? Number one, it will give us strong, steadfast believers. If you follow up and you do not leave the people, they will find their own way or to find their feet. When you follow up on those newcomers, it will make them strong, make them steadfast believers. Number two, it will give us steady growth of those converts. Those converts will be growing steadily, and they will be growing up in the things of the Lord. Number three, it will also bring fervent commitment to evangelism in the local church. Number four, it will also mean the prevention of backsliding. That's how they did it in the early church, and that's what the Lord is calling us to do. We ought to do it as well. That means we shouldn't allow the period between the evangelization and the follow-up to be too far apart. Some days after, not some months after, not some years after, some days after. You see, follow-up is very necessary. We want to see how they are doing. We want to see how they are responding. We want to see the impact and the result of what we did before. That will help us in going to a new stage or going to a new region or going to a new locality. We'll be able to say, okay, the method we used in that place is working. Because when we go back there, we see the result. We see the follow-up. 
we see the response of the people, we see the growth of the church, and we see the impact on that community that then we say, uh -huh, we cannot go to a new region, go to a new place, and try exactly the same thing, because what we did the other time there is actually working, we've gone back there, and we've seen the result, we can go and duplicate it, reproduce it in another place. And that's what the Lord is calling us to. Have you visited any of those converts three times? Look at Jesus. He rose from the dead and to strengthen them and to make them stand unshakable and to make them face the persecution waiting for them in the acts of the apostles. He appeared to them. He appeared to them. He appeared to them again. Don't you know those new converts, babes in Christ, can be very, very fearful. What will my friends say? What will my parents say? What will my schoolmates say? What will my community say? And the people I've been running out together with, playing pranks and doing evil, I'm not doing that again. What are they going to say? And then they become fearful. They might lock themselves up. At just at the right moment, you are there to strengthen them, to say, peace be unto you. What if you go to those uh, newcomers and you don't meet them at home? And they just happen not to be there. What do you do? You go back there again. If you are following up the new converts, you've gone there once, you've gone there the second time, and now they, after the second visitation, when they were very happy, they were very glad. You came, wonderful. And then uh, one of them said, I think I want to go back. What do you do? Do you get discouraged yourself? Follow up is so essential. Follow up is so important. And without vision, the people perish. Uh, what are we learning? We consider and we become committed, number one, to the vision. Number two, to the value. Number three, to visitation. Number four, to the variety. Number five, to the vigilance. And then number six, to the virtue. Number seven, to the vow. I pray you will keep them, and they will not be lost. And on the final day, according to your consecration, commitment, and vow, they will be with the Lord and be with us together in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Why don't you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I will do it. Lord, I will do it. Somebody say, Lord, I will do it. Everybody say, Lord, I will do it. Let's commit what we have had this evening unto the Lord. Let's make a commitment to the Lord. Let's tell the Lord, I will do it. Let's tell the Lord, I will do it. We will do visitation. We will do follow up. Let's pray and call upon the name of the Lord. All the souls that the Lord has blessed us with, we will not neglect them. We will not leave them to waste. Let's pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, raise up your voice in prayer and pray and call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I will follow up the souls that are committed unto me. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. My brother, my sister, it is not enough for those souls to make a decision without follow-up. We must follow them up. If they are going to be steadfast, if they are going to stand, if they are going to continue without backsliding, we need to follow them up. Let's pray and tell the Lord, Lord, I am available. Let's pray and commit all those souls unto the Lord, that the Lord will help us locate them. We will not lose any of them. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I will not lose my convert. I will not lose those souls. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things. As you go to visit those converts, teach them on the assurance of salvation. As you go to visit those converts, teach them on the character of a Christian. Now that they are saved, they ought to live as a child of God. They ought to live like believers. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord that you will teach them. You will teach them the word of God on how to overcome temptation. Teach them the word of God on prayer, on quiet time. Teach them the word of God on how to 
preach to their friends, share with their friends. Now they are, that they are saved, pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Anywhere you are, tell the Lord, Lord, I will not lose my convert. I want to ask you a question. Now that you have been given a soul to follow up, have you followed up that soul? It is not enough to go there once and then to forget about the convert. Go again, go again, like Barnabas that went to seek for soul. Go and seek for those souls. Let's pray that all that the Lord has given us, all those souls will not be wasted. Uh, the effort of our Father and the Lord will not be a waste. The resources that the church is spending on these souls will not be a waste. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. My brother, pray. My sister, pray. Everywhere, raise up your voices now and pray. Let's call upon the name of the Lord and tell the Lord to establish those souls. When they stand, they will have steady growth in the church. They will also grow as believers. Let's pray and commit them to the hands of God that the Lord God Almighty will help us. Our vision concerning these souls will be bright. It will not be blue. Let's pray that the Lord will give us the grace to understand the value of those souls. Let's pray that the Lord will give us the virtue to follow them. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. My brother, wherever you are, I want you to pray that God will make you faithful. God will give you the grace to be faithful. Today, a lot of people, they are committed to so many things that they neglect those souls, they forget those souls. Let's pray that God will give us fervency. God will give us compassion. God will give us love. Let's pray that God will help us. As many people followed us in time past, as many people spend their resources in time past, let's also pray that the Lord God Almighty will help us, will be willing to spend and be spent for this source. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. Let's pray that even tonight, as we have come for another Bible study, the Lord will use our Father in the Lord to bring the revelation of the kingdom to us, to speak the mysteries of the kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's pray and ask the Lord to give us the heart of obedience that we will obey. Father, we want to thank you tonight because of this privilege again that you have given us to be reminded of what we ought to do to keep those souls that you graciously gave us during the last concluded program and the ones that you gave us in programs past. We want to commit ourselves unto you. Grant us the love for those souls. Grant us the commitment to this assignment. We are praying, dear Lord, that none of those souls will, will be lost. None of those souls will be wasted. We pray for grace. We pray for obedience in every heart. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Our Father in the Lord, as you will teach us tonight, more anointing, more utterance, more grace, more revelation. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed a global amen. Welcome, everyone. Happy late tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray the Lord will reward your faithfulness being there every time. Yeah. Father, we thank you tonight and bless your name for your word. Your word ever new and ever fresh and penetrating every heart. We pray, Lord, that your blessings will accompany your word tonight in every heart, in every life, in Jesus' name. We pray that your spirit will go with the word and make use of the word we're hearing to make the people stand and stay stable and solid in the place where you have planted every one of us. And Lord, keep us awake at alert as we hear your word today that will not sleep on you while you're speaking. And that the word will bring revival fire in every heart in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, 
Amen. God bless you. You can see them. We're coming to Psalm 24. And we're reading from verses 3 and 4. Psalm 24, reading from verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? And then in verse 4, the answer comes. And it says, He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Here David, the psalmist, a king, the king of Israel, he was asking, he wanted to know, after this world is over, after all the service of man on earth is over, after we come face to face with God, after death or after the rapture, who shall stand in the heel of the Lord and who shall abide in his place forever? Isn't that what we should be thinking about? Because there's no man, there's no woman, there's no believer, there's no sage that comes to this world and remains in the world forever. We don't even want to remain in the world forever. The world, like the wilderness, is so dangerous and so terrible. Nobody wants to live in the wilderness of the world forever. We want to go to the great beyond. Even if we did not want to go, one day we will leave this world. And when we leave this world, it should be our concern where will I spend eternity? And where will you spend eternity? That's why the question is very important. Who shall abide in the heel of the Lord? Who shall stay? Who shall dwell? Who shall remain permanent forever, eternally in the holy heel of the Lord? It's asking for who will get to heaven? What are the qualifications? What are the things God will look at so that we can get to heaven? And then the answer comes from the Lord himself. He that has clean hands. The opposite of clean is unclean. Those who have unclean hands, unclean lips, like Cassia said, I am undone because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Those who have unclean lips, unclean language, unclean character, unclean behavior, unclean secrets. They will not get there. But the people that come through, they come through Christ, our Savior, the one who purges us and the one who purifies us and the one that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He then, having gone through the provision of Calvary, he then, having gone through the cleansing in the blood of the Lamb, he has clean hands, clean character, clean behavior, and clean manners. He that has clean hands and a pure heart is not one or the other. It's one and the other, the outward expression of our salvation. We have clean hands, the outward expression which we we'll see in a behavior we have clean character, the outward expression which we we'll see from day to day, the things we do that others can see, the things we do during the day, the behavior, the character, the lifestyle, he that has clean hands and a pure heart. The opposite of pure is impure impure. If the heart is impure, remember, the body will be buried after death, and the soul, the spirit, the heart that will go to God to, uh, to account for everything that we have done. And actually, it's the heart that is the issue of our life. It is what comes to the heart, what we meditate on in the heart, what we produce from the heart, that is what actually determines everything we do. The heart is the source of every action and the source of every language and the source of all the behavior that will manifest and so must have pure heart if the heart is still like in the original stage the inbred scene will be there if the heart is in the original stage it will be depraved it will be impure it will be unholy it will be unacceptable in the sight of the lord he that has 
clean hands and a pure heart. And then there's something that, you know, a person having clean hands and a pure heart, there is something he will not do who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Who are the people that said swear deceitfully? They do something that they know is wrong, and they say, I swear to God. They say, I can, I swear that they say so. And they always, you don't have to swear if you're really doing the truth. The truth will speak for itself. But the people that swear deceitfully, they swear wrongly, they swear to something for God to testify to something that is not true. Those people are not really well connected with the Lord. Who are the people that will dwell in the hill of the Lord and abide in his holy place? They are the people that have clean hands. They are the people that have a pure heart. They are the people that do not swear deceitfully and they do not lift up their soul unto vanity. We're looking at three points here as we're concerned the message tonight on the hands and the heart of heaven bound saints. We are heaven bound. We want to get to heaven and we want to know we're not going to be offended if anybody tells us how to get rich, how to get wealthy, if anybody tells us how to have good hell. How are we going to get angry or get offended if somebody tells us the way to heaven? The qualification to be in the sight of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord forever and ever, if there is any joy we have, is that somebody is uh, interested in, uh, in us enough to say, is in the way to heaven. If there is any interest we have, it should be in the person that says, look, look at the provision God has made and look at the provision Christ has made. Look at the sacrifice of Christ that we benefit from that gets us to heaven. How happy are we? We belong to a church that can tell us this is the way. How fortunate we are that we have a leader, a teacher, a pastor, a pastor, a shepherd, a guide that can say, look at the word of God. Let's read it together. Let's search it together. And let's let us benefit together. This is the way to heaven. That's why we're talking about this important subject, the hands and the heart of heaven bound says. Three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, the corrupt hands and perverse hearts of hell bent sinners. There are sinners that are on their way to hell and they are hell bent. And they want to do everything that they even go there sooner than they should get there. Hell bent determined that that place, they say there's a hell, they need hurry to get there now. What do they do? How do they live? How do they comport themselves? The corrupt hands and perverse hearts of hell-bent sinners. Number two, the clean hands and pure hearts of heaven-bound saints. There are people from our youth, from our young age, who have heard about heaven. And the preachers, whether they were born again or not, I can't tell now, but they so spoke about heaven, and we sang about heaven, and they told us about the angels there, and they told us about the beauty of heaven, and the glory of heaven, and we said, that's where I want to go. That's where I want to spend eternity. But he didn't tell us what do we do? How do we behave? How do we live? So that we can get to that place number two. The clean hands and pure hearts of heaven bound saints. Number three, the consecrated hands. We don't want to get there alone. We want to get there with other people. And so our hands 
our skill, our energy, everything we have, we consecrate to the Lord so we can touch that life, transform that life, bring that other one, and we can say, let's go along. We consecrate everything we have so we can take other people to heaven with us. We're looking at number three, the consecrated times and persevering hearts of heralding servants. Those who come to herald, those who come to announce the coming of the Lord, consecrated hands and persevering hands of heralding servants. Number one now, number one, we're looking at the corrupted hands and perverse hearts of hell bench sinners. We're looking at Psalm 26, reading from verse 9. Psalm 26, verse 9, gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men. Verse 10, verse 10 says, whose hands is innocent, is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. Those ones, uh, you know, they're hell bent. They have heard this is the way to perdition, but they do it anyhow. This is the way to hell, but they go through that way all the same. In Isaiah chapter 33, reading there from verse 14, Isaiah 33 verse 14, the sinners in Zion are afraid. You wouldn't think of sinners being in Zion, but the Bible says Zion, a beautiful city, the great city, the perfect city of a living God, yet there are sinners there. It says the sinners in Zion are afraid. It says fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with devouring fire, who among us shall dwell with everlasting Bunnies. We're looking at three subtitles here. Number one, number one, we're looking at the description of hideous corrupted hands. Number two, the discernment of hidden controlling hands. Number three, the damnation of hellish condemned hearts. Look at number one there. Number one is the description of hideous corrupted hands. Hideous corrupted hands. It says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15, Isaiah 1 15, and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear why your hands are full of blood. These are religious people. They spread their hands in prayer before God, in worship before God. They make many prayers, many kinds of prayers. And yet God says, I will not hear because their hands are full of blood. Their hands are full of blood, murder, killing other people. Whether they count those people as their enemies, as their competitors, whatever. If you kill another person made by God, your hands are full of blood. There are people that say, I wasn't expecting this baby. What am I going to do? And they decide they're going to abort that baby. They're going to shed the blood of that innocent baby. The Lord says their hands are full of blood. Their hands are evil. It says in verse 16, in verse 16, it says, wash you, make you clean. Because because God requires that your hands should be clean. What have your hands been doing? What have your hands been practicing? What do you touch? What do you push? What do you attract? What do you bring? That God looks at you and he says, your hands are unclean. It says, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes cease to do evil. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 59, we're reading from verse 2. Isaiah 59 verse 2, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid this face from you, that he will not hear. In verse 3, it says, in verse 3, it says, for your hands are defiled with blood. The, the defilement 
it makes our hands unclean. Anything you do that defiles your hand, defiles your life, make your life filthy and dirty and makes your language and makes your person uh, when you are coming you know the people they may not be bold enough to tell you what to say is coming she's coming she's likely to tell a bad dirty feel the joke she's coming he's coming is likely to propound again something dirty anytime she comes anytime he comes what he tells us and what she tells us makes us feel like going for a wash because unclean and to get those words again away from our hearts it takes us a long time the behavior the action the body language the dressing brings filthiness into the minds into the hearts of people your hands are defiled with blood your fingers waste iniquity your lips have spoken lies your tongue has muttered perverseness those are the people and when people are like that they must get to Calvary before they can get to heaven they must go through the way of the cross so that they confess all those sins and they bring everything to the foot of Christ and they are washed and they are cleansed and now they have clean hands before they can go on in Micah chapter 7 I'm looking at verse 3 Micah chapter 7 we're looking at verse 3 that they may do evil with both hands earnestly those are the hell bench people they do evil you know some people can do whatever they're doing with one hand but then they say this must be done days of cleanness they must say uh, you know hold with both hands and then shovel it to other people though this on cleanness they must use both hands honestly with determination and with real consecration they put all their mind all their brain and everything they've got into it so that they can spread the evil it says they do evil with both hands earnestly the prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward and the great man he uttereth his mischievous desire so they wrap it up look at verse 4 there in verse 4 it says the best of them is as a briar the most upright is sharper than a thorn edge and the day of thy watchmen and, uh, and thy visitation cometh now shall be their perplexity in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. The Gentiles, they have unclean hands. Either they set somebody's house on fire, or they destroy somebody's property hand, or they defile somebody's daughter hands, or they defile somebody's wife, their hands, or they take bribes, their hands or they have unlawful gain or they use their education and their training and their skill and their power to make somebody do evil they have unclean hands and they do corrupt evil licentious things we're looking at number two number two here we're looking at the discernment of hidden controlling hands the discernment of healing controlling hands you understand healing uh, when somebody hides the hand and yet with that hand he has hidden he's doing evil and God still understands you hide your hand but you're doing evil you hide your face yet watch your hand 
or you borrow somebody's hand and you do evil look at second samuel chapter 14 in second samuel chapter 14 i'm reading here from verse 19 it says and the king said is not the hand of joab with thee in all this joab was not there joab was not physically present. He was an evil strategist. He wanted somebody to go to the king and tell the king something as if what the woman was saying was totally from her. The hand of Joab was not seen. It was hidden. But when the woman came and told a deceptive story, to control the decision of the king. The king saw that. He said, it's not the hand of Joab with thee in all this. And the woman answered and said, as thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king has spoken for thy servant Joab, he bade me and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. You see, when you put, uh, you can't, you don't want to do something directly. You cannot do that thing directly. The circumstances will not allow you to do that thing directly. And you say, ah, ah you of all people. How can you say that? How can you do that? How can you go that direction? And then, but you want that evil thing to be done. Don't quote me. Don't mention my name. Don't tell them I sent you. But you know, go to him, go to her, and put it this way. Construct the story this way. It will deceive him. It will jolt him. It will get him by surprise. And then the fellow comes and brings the word of deception. And the word that turns our world upside down. Or the thing that brings evil. Or the thing that controls us and sends us on a fool's errand. To go and do and to go and say something wrong. And yet you are standing behind and you are the one engineering that thing. Your hands are not clean. The person becomes the errant, the errant boy, errant girl, errant man, errant woman of the sinful project. He too will be condemned by the Lord, but the Lord will know you are the hidden hand controlling the action that leads to evil. Uh, look at uh, chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 14. Chapter 11, we're looking at verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. You know the story. Uh, this uh, David, he had um, an illicit unlawful, unacceptable affair with the wife of Uriah. Uriah's wife is now pregnant. She was still at the stage of being able to get pregnant. There are people who are, who are past the age of getting pregnant, but they do evil too. But in the case of David, Bathsheba was pregnant. And now the thing will come out. And so we're told about what, what David did. He wrote a letter. And he wrote it by the hand of Uriah himself. The husband of that woman. Look at verse 15. In verse 15 it says, And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die now the physical hand of david did not kill uriah but 
is sent a letter